You're listening to Coffee Break Flight Instruction by M0A.com. Flight train tips in 15 minutes or less. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com alongside my good friend, uh, the, the flight instructor extraordinaire, the, the medical expert doctor extraordinaire, affectionately called Uncle Larry. Welcome to Coffee Break Flight Instruction. Flight train tips in 15 minutes or less. Let's go ahead and start that clock to keep us honest here. The topic today... Well, slow flight is the topic today, but we kind of want to take a twist on it. Slow flight, uh, it's just not any old maneuver kind of thing. Larry, you care to explain that a little bit? Sure. Um, of course, uh, when I first introduced it to the students, we go out to the practice area. But um, when I learned as a private pilot, it was just one of the things I needed in order to pass my check ride. And that's not really what it is. So when I take my students out, I said, here's where you can actually apply it. This is the reason why we do it. And there's just so many areas where you can actually use this and you'll make a much better pilot by having this skill down. So the first thing I do whenever anybody gets checked out in a new airplane is I go out to the practice area and it's not, it's, it's not like second or third or fourth thing that I do with actually the students. Actually, I take them to do slow flight first because mm -hmm. I want to see how that they get used to, how they can figure out the airplane, what RPMs that they're using, it really gives them a good feel of the airplane. Then after that, everything is actually easy. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing that I do. And then also, as you well put in your fantastic book, is uh, it's a gold standard on how to make perfect landings. And I just think it's so, so important in order to be able to incorporate slow flight into that transition when you're coming down final and you're ready and you're close, you're about three inches off of the runway, you're really in slow flight. So what I do is I first actually take the, the students out and I do a little bit of a hybrid. So what I do is I actually, on final, I'll, I'll actually pick a road and we'll choose that as our final approach and our runway. I have them stick their hands underneath their thighs. And then what I do is I just have them use rudder just to keep the center of the airplane in line with that road or whatever kind of landmark that we're using. Then when they're transitioning, so I'll say, okay, we're going to level out at 3,000. That is going to be your runway. So I want you to keep it three inches above 3,000 feet, which uh, they kind of look at me kind of funny, and then they say, hmm, okay. I said, why are we doing this? Because this is what it's going to feel like when you're going to be over the runway. So then when they transition out there, they are actually in slow flight. They have all their flaps down. They're keeping aligned with it. They'll get a great picture, a little bit of a transition, so the nose will be a little bit up. And they're probably going to get close to their stall warning here, and that's going to freak them out initially. But that really is not nothing. That's what really they should be looking for. That's their sweet spot. And so then the third thing, actually, is uh, that I do with it. Actually, I use that for their loss procedures. So if they all of a sudden lose every single landmark and they're lost, so besides I tell them to look for like water towers and things over cities, what I do is I said slow everything down. You're going to get really, really anxious until you find your landmark again. And I said slow that airplane down, put it into slow flight, put all your flaps in there, keep it at, and start looking for stuff. And uh, once they usually they'll find it, they'll get back in, they get off of slow flight and get back on their merry way. And then the last thing, you know, that I kind of like look at is if they're really still having problems with the transition to landing is we'll do low approaches. So I go out and find the longest runway I possibly can. We're lucky we have an 8,000 foot runway that's probably about 10 minutes from our airport. And um, then we just practice doing slow flight three inches above the runway. And I'll tell you, each and every time, there has never been, this is 100%, if they can do slow flight down the runway, just barely over, and then, then we'll do a go around, there is not one person, not one student that I've had that hasn't done the perfect landing or close to the perfect landing. You know, it's so funny you say that too, Larry. I find when a student's struggling with their landings and we do, we could be having a really rough day. You know, just when a student's just kind of having a bad day, the landings just aren't where they, they should be for their kind of level. And finally you say, you know what, this time around, I don't want you to land. I want you to just give me slow flight down the runway. And we do that, and they think, oh, this is really a, a waste of a good pattern, you know. And then we go around, and we come back around, and just like that, the next landing is better. It's all about sight picture. It's all about where you put your eyes. We've talked about this a lot in the Secret of Perfect Landings book, the Secret of Perfect Landings webinar, which you can find on YouTube if you haven't seen it already. 
Slow flight, you are right, Larry. Again, I came into slow flight uh, with the wrong mindset early on in my training. My mindset was, why do I want to get this airplane as slow as possible, as close to a stall as possible? I hadn't done a stall, but I kind of heard about stalls, so I was a little bit nervous about it. Um, you know, it's Florida, it's the summertime, it's 90 degrees, there's no airflow coming in. I didn't enjoy slow flight at all uh, to begin with, but I didn't understand why I was doing it. And when finally I realized that, you know, you're in slow flight right before you touch down on the runway, it, it clicked and it made sense why we did slow flight. So sometimes knowing why we do a maneuver and knowing what maneuvers we can do uh, to help us become more proficient in other areas of our flying, such as our landings. Who would have thought slow flight and landings would correlate like that? So, again, I won't get into a big, long tangent about it. If you guys want to learn more, uh, you can go check out the Secret to Perfect Landings webinar. Just type in Secret to Perfect Landings uh, on YouTube, on Google. It'll come right up so you guys can uh, check all that stuff out. Anyways, guys, uh, I believe that's all we've got, certainly uh, within our 15-minute uh, realm there, Larry. So appreciate you sharing uh, that. Guys, hope you uh, really, really enjoyed that. On behalf of myself, the magnificent Uncle Larry, uh, this is Coffee Break Flight Instruction. Uh, subscribe on iTunes. Leave us a review. We really appreciate that. And most importantly, guys, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.